ông cứ cho ông chung đẹp cảm to cái chung đại can tiệm thi sạm la ca hay một đồng đội đại ca chuyên từ thạ bình nhà rồi chết xong một đồng lực thạ thạ bình nhà rồi thạ bình nhà rồi chờ thạ bì bì nó mốc đồng nào đầm đồng rồi mấy miền dạ về bì viện này ngày sạm la ca tiệt tế nông ca tăng xung nua định đào chỉ muốn để chìm đình trong này tòa nếp đào đại ca chuyên từ thạ bình nhà rồi anh đại chết nằm bên bên tòa ca tăng xung nua định đào chỉ muốn để chìm đình Thank you, Your Honour. That uh, it's in line with our calculations. Some are going to look at him. Your Honour, before I begin, I think I'm just going to clarify one point. In relation to the Defence Council statement that the person that we're talking about is here, it could be or is the person contained in four statements. To the OCIJ, and we didn't ask this chamber to have him called as a witness. The first point is you only did ask this chamber to call him as a witness. That's why. The second point is the prosecution are not 100% sure. Whether it's the same person or not, because we have had a chance to speak to them. Um, for clarification, that certainly the E3 numbers of another witness, perhaps all the same ones we don't know, that worked at Kerala um, sub-district, uh, the community sub-district Kerala. The E3 numbers of three of the statements we have are E3 slash 9667, E3 slash 9453, and E3 slash 9453. And of course, we have no objections if the expert in, um, after the break and before the questioning by the defence uh, would like to review those statements to see if it refreshes his memory, but whether is or is not the person that he spoke to. But Mình đang thà một cô lấy cho một cô để nhận chuyện gì anh có phong tài này gì xem đầu tư lớn nữa rồi còn giang nào nội tệ. But I mean I'm talking about the one in the OCIJ. But I'm just wondering whether if I could ask you to not have a big objection because I only have two or three statements that are relevant to the case. Do you have a big objection because I only have two or three statements that are relevant to the case. Do you have a big objection because I only have two or three statements that are relevant to the case. Kenyang ko terobahan ke kat tanah nopel su semua jenjuk nyop itu kenyang nong kenyang fak pon tu nengkam lagi sedap jam lain nai bokol menak dah yang jual tak semua nopel ni ke meja bika pi kat day nong sahaja tu yang kepung te nai jay panjang te mui te pantai yang mesdang coba te pantai I will get back to the witness wasn't asked to be summoned by the prosecution. Thank you, Your Honour. 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 More questions before I hand the floor to my colleague. The civil code or is, and I think the first question, and if it can be a yes or no answer, that would be helpful. Um, yesterday you said that the Phnom Bros, Phnom Srey security centre uh, was in operation uh, before the purge of the Kampong district. And then it was suspended for a while, and then it commenced an operation again, bringing people uh, to be killed. And you mentioned the various stories. Is that correct? It was an operation both before the purge and after the purge. 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 Set off some explosives. It was a transition. Okay. If I, perhaps, we, if we can continue um, 
in relation to Kim Bantosu, Pepon, Tunung, Joke Vesna, Robotchen Chipinam, Nung Chicham, others in Kampong Siem, Kadochi, Richard Nukong Srokong Siem. I'd like to put another statement to you from a witness who lived in Tulbang Village in Pralapong, 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 in and regarding the, the Vietnamese channel resources. And this is uh, E3 slash 9656, English 0103-4899, Khmer 0098-7139-40, and French uh, not translated. ແລະກະບໍ່ໄດ້ຫຼາຍເດຕິດສະນິດຄືຊິຈຳລາຍຂອງສະໄສມະນາດແລ້ວຮູ້ໃນພູມຕູນເບງຄວສຊິນ the end of 1977. ហើយអ្នកខ្លះឃើញមានវាយនឹងរបបព្រមទីសន្តិសុខមកពីទូលបេងខ្ញុំគ្រឿងមិនទីសន្តិសុខមកពីទូលបេងខ្ញុំគ
ដែលគេមិនបានចុះពីទីពួកគេតែងតែមកស្នើសរុបអង្គការអនុញ្ញាតដើម្បីពួកអត់ពួកគេត្រឡប់ទៅស្រុកយូនវិញប្រសិនប
but there's nothing that's directly specifying that. The all strikes rhetoric was applied to people linked to Vietnam as well. But I would say that they would have to be more specific. I think that's the point of the next one or two questions. Um, Looking at uh, the propaganda, uh, the revolutionary flags, speeches throughout the period, um, have you seen a uh, very large term or broad term about who the enemy is? And here I'm referring to suppressed all stripes of enemy. Um, have you seen that almost broad term? Ambiguous in the Indian Indian I, I believe that's a fairly frequent reference, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, again, uh, after DK, the, one of the central metaphors of the DK regime was uh, the notion of battle is still being at war, everything mobilized like the war. So this very much fits in with that. There was both the war that was going to take place to conquer, in some sense, uh, the elements to farm, to build the country, but also against enemies who were threatening uh, to subvert the revolution. So there, there was this dual mobilization language that was used. Uh, this seems to be referring to the second against enemies of all stripes, uh, which is a broad umbrella. Um, but in terms of linking it directly to ethnic Vietnamese or ethnic John, I would uh, say that we can necessarily interpret that unless there's a broader But it does fit with general second. And, and in in the context of your evidence in relation to building that revolutionary um, conscience, um, self-sessions, um, autobiographies, propaganda that was produced, my question is, the use of this broad language, um, does that increase or decrease or not have an effect on the likelihood of particular target groups being killed by the government? If it doesn't Yes, it would. Increase the likelihood of the uh, as well an authorization of the donation of doing so, though not as one has said before, before that's explicit. Uh, it's general incitement. It doesn't seem to be explicit in the sense of being targeted at ethnic jobs or ethnic jobs. And I have um, three more documents I would like to put to you uh, in the similar vein. And I'd like to look at the language um, directed towards the Vietnamese uh, in a speech by Pol Pot, as republished in the April 1978 this has been heard a lot in this case. When any country commits aggression against Cambodia, we will use the slogan and we will fight them we lose one, do you and lose 30? So then the losses are 30 times in that of the UN. If we make the calculation again, for one country to the UN must have 30, uh, to 10 Cambodian troops, how many must the UN have 300? They must have 300. They must have 300 Cambodian troops, the UN must have 3,000. For 1 million Cambodian troops, the UN must have 30 million. So then, when we have 
Đối chính này, một sân này chỉ dưới miền còn tộp 10 liên hay dùn trọng miền còn tộp 3 sập liền. Bỏ dương miền còn tộp 2 liên dùn trọng miền còn tộp 6 sập liền. Dương miền còn tộp lơ vì dương trọng ca tổ tiết. Nhưng cứ dùn trọng ca còn tộp là hốt đó là 2 sập liên dương mình bạch bảo còn tộp là hốt đó 3 sập liên đấy. Bảo tập trùm 2 liên đẹp bàn ấy. Đồng bởi cầm tích của dùn hốt học tập liền nè đầm bầy đọt sài mẹ kia bởi dân về nâng dương tôi tôi bàn chê chùm nè hai bởi thay dương đọt sài bà nhà hà mình bàn tế về nụ cư thà dương nâng chút bởi tế bà nhà hà hai kê nâng về bởi dân một dương hai mai xem nua rồi bọn nhóm cứ bởi hạ bà hai là cái nếp tôi nâng xem nua ẩm bánh mình đi đáy Your studies, your comparative studies, can involve massive protests by the government of the country. The propaganda of the Jews, 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 Have any effect in either discouraging or encouraging the Vietnamese to return to Cambodia as well? Do you feel the benefits of that as well? Do you feel the benefits of that as well? Do you feel the benefits of that as well? Do you feel the benefits of that? Bà Lộc Bạch Hiến, khi nhóm xong một cuốn, bà khi nhóm dô lực hình hà, chồng phù hân đại chồng niên, về mình chứng ngang nghe sử dụng lúc thế, khi nông ca án xâm răng, hạt bạc hai mình bắt đọc bình dụng bạc đại bọt, sử dụng thà, xa bệnh nhá, khoa đã cháu xong một cuốn, bánh 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 bánh, Vietnam civil, civil, Vietnam civil, Cùng phương tài nhỏ chôn mọt chùm điên nhé ta kênh DMP civil chùm điên ở Việt Nam civil đài bộ tàn nâu nông sản đại tàn nếu cứ nâng dịp dịch chùm lùa và bà đã bảo vụt nâu thê đối chức nếp nhóm sông chùm tốt hàm phê đồ bia bằng hành xong rằng nếch tàu hân đại chùm điên hay hân nhóm sông rộng lực hôm nay thà nếch chỉ cả đó xong rằng nếch chanh bị bạc đồ bọt tên mà đoàn lũ thiên Rồi nói khát I'm not going to read the whole document, <coughs> but uh, I think the expert is uh, fully aware of the context of this um, we're not saying that it's, it's not uh, dealing with uh, a military situation. What we are saying, what we're putting forward, is whether or not this type of language in terms of the, the principle, whether or not it would have an effect on um, CPK cadre and others, and how they treat um, Vietnamese civilians. We're not mischaracterizing the doctrine. We're asking the expert to explain his គឺយើងគ្រាន់តែសួរសរសៃហើយយើងដឹងអំពីបរិបទនៃឯកសារនេះហើយអ្វីដែលយើងចាំដឹងគេថាតើវាវៀតណាមីស្ទាដីរកអ
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Deputy Co-Prosecutor, uh, so briefly, the, the quick answer is yes, I think this is uh, language that borders on genocidal incitement, but I think it's important to recognize as well that the word, again, this word, I don't really like to use it in court, but it's the word, UN, again, is being used, um, and I think it's being used both against people from the country, of Vietnam, but as well against people who are identified as ethnic Vietnamese and potentially those, as said before, from, for example, the East Zone are said to have and, you know, common, common phrase, uh, the Vietnamese head, but Khmer bodies. Um, and the issue of the East Zone and whether it might be classified as a national group uh, or somehow fall within this is something that maybe perhaps is raised by statements like this as well. Um, thank you, Professor. Um, I'd like to refer to an excerpt from the same, the same speech. speech. And, and I think this is a document that you were provided with uh, a week ago. And it's your tab. 17.2, it's a Pol Pot speech, third anniversary in April 1978, and it was reproduced in the Revolutionary Flag, and the excerpt is E3 4604 at English 00519836, Khmer 00064717, and French 00520348. And this is what he said. Quote, originally, did the UN ever fight us in the UN? The UN have wanted to make Cambodia a subject since 1930. In 1970, they could take Cambodia. They could not take it. In 1975, they were able to take Cambodia. Question mark. They could not. And now, how about the UN? There are no UN in Cambodian territory. Formerly, there were nearly one million of them. Now there is not one seed of them to be found. So then, our view is, do not give up in advance. Look at the history. Can the UN swallow up Cambodia or not? Question mark, they cannot. My question is similar to the previous two. In your opinion, this statement that there is not one seed of them to be found in reference to the UN, and do not give up in advance, would this type of statement have the likelihood we to encourage or discourage the killing of the Vietnamese civilians in Democratic Cambodia. It doesn't, just say so. Uh, again, uh, very clearly it does so. Um, and, uh, you know, I should add that it's also referring to the successful completion of the genocide that's taken place. Uh, so if you look at the numbers, the demographic report that, that all of that Vietnamese uh, perished during this period, uh, it's what might be called a successful genocide in the sense that virtually every ethnic Vietnamese disappeared from Cambodia is being said in the statement. And the, I also might add the word seed, although uh, anyways is a sort of root metaphor for the destruction of what might be called a race, um, so that's a root metaphor. Um, the last document is uh, referred to the revolutionary flag dated May to June 1978, tab 18.2, and it's E3 slash English 0018 and I'm quoting from the, the revolutionary flag in May to June 1978. To sum things up, 
ជាមន្ទាប់មិនតាមមិនតាមហើយយើងជាខ្មាំងកាច់សាវយុងក្នុងបំផុតឥឡូវនេះខ្ញុំចាប់អារម្មណ៍បំផុតគឺការវាយផ
sharpens if there were any ethnic Vietnamese left uh, in Cambodia at that time. I don't know. You know the, the trial chamber will have to determine that based on all the interviews and uh, investigations uh, that have taken place. Yeah, no, I don't know. The sequence is not clear from the scholarship that existed beforehand uh, because so many, you know, virtually everyone was killed. But the third part of it is those associated with you and who uphold you and might be those with Vietnamese heads, but Khmer mind. I mean, Vietnamese minds, Khmer bodies. Thank you. I have two, two last questions for you. The first one is, in your opinion, based on the interviews you had, the propaganda you have reviewed and the research you have done for Vietnamese civilians living in Cambodia targeted for killing during the deportation. Uh, yes, the case seems strong and compelling. A second question is who, in terms of entity or body, who was leading that campaign? Where was that coming from, uh, The standing, the CPK standing committee would be at the apex of control in terms of disseminating party line. Propaganda, ideology, and orders that would go down and run throughout the country. And also mobilizing the army, of course. And thank you, Professor. I, I have no further questions. Thank you, Professor. I have no further questions. Thank you, Professor. អមេតវីកាពីក្តីអមេតវីនាំមុខតំណាងដើមដឹងរដ្ឋបវិនីដើម្បីមានឱកាសសួរនេះដល់ចំពោះអ្នកជំនាញ <coughs> Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, Bonjour à tous. Je Bonjour, Monsieur Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Je Je vous remercie, en me focalisant sur euh, des politiques et des crimes dont la Chine et ses saisies dans ce dossier, en commençant tout d'abord par l'impact des politiques sur le bouddhisme et les bouddhistes, et puis ensuite l'impact des politiques sur le bouddhisme et les bouddhistes, et puis ensuite l'impact des politiques pour toutes mes questions, je vais essayer de faire un résumé en français de ce que j'ai compris de votre intervention, la page de citer de citer nos passages en anglais, donc j'espère que les personnes ne seront pas surprises par ce que je je vais donc commencer mes questions Et vous dites dans votre ouvrage que le bouddhisme était un des trois piliers de la société traditionnelle et qu'il fournissait un lieu et vous dites que c'est le terme de social morale et éducative dans la vie de tous les jours. 
ជីវិតប្រចាំថ្ងៃរបស់ប្រជាជនខ្មែរ Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Civil Party uh, um, Prior to uh, Democratic Kampuchea, uh, Buddhism, as is well known, was an absolute central pillar to uh, everyday Cambodian life, both in the cities and in the countryside, especially in the countryside, uh, because people lived in proximity to pagodas. Much of the life revolved around the pagoda in terms, uh, in addition to social Moral and educational, I would add ritual as well, because there were constant rituals that would take place at the pagoda. Um, many people, young people, uh, who are unable to go to schools for one reason or another uh, might go and become educated at the pagoda, which is the reason that when the uh, Khmer Rouge came to power, uh, again, they were able to play upon Buddhist language to mobilize people because some people they were recruiting had been at the pagodas. Um, you had the teaching of basic precepts of morality, uh, like the five moral precepts, including the first precept, uh, which forbids killing of other uh, of life, human life. Um, we learned and talked about the pagoda, provided a very explicit uh, moral way to lead lives uh, through mindfulness, uh, through adhering, uh, trying to avoid desire and attachment. Uh, and so it was absolutely central and fundamental. But it was, again, both in the morality, the moral norms that were taught, as well as everyday life, going to the pagoda or having monks come for different ceremonies. And, why I think that's also important in terms of democratic Kampuchea is because obviously the clear part of destroying the pagodas, damaging them, and using them as uh, detention centers, some of the people were tortured in pagodas. Uh, Buddha statues were destroyed. Um, so yeah, the crushing of something that was absolutely central to uh, Cambodian ways of life, but the after effect I think is not talked about as much, which is that when people, for example, <coughs> died, it was very difficult to perform ceremonies for the souls of the dead, which is why often the souls remained and came back and potentially haunted people. Um, you know, so if you go to Tool Slang, which Chris, you know, to, excuse me, to S21, which condenses it, if you talk to people nearby, and you think they see wandering ghosts, spirits of the dead, you've had many the civil parties, case one, and, uh, and case two, I assume so, have gone, actually gone to Tool Slang uh, Museum and performed ceremonies for the ghosts of the dead. Uh, but the guests wonder, I remember at times in court during case one, one gentleman brought in a photo and said, the spirit of the dead, my, my brother is here in this photo with me right now, and I think it's easy in a setting like this to forget the people who are from outside of Cambodia, the, the spirits of the dead, the disturbed souls, are here, I mean, literally here in this courtroom with us in some sense, potentially. Uh, and so it continues. When does the genocide end? Well, in a sense, it goes on and on and on. And the reverberations continue. Uh, but I think you know, we can't, besides talking about the destruction of Buddhism, and all the things it did in terms of Cambodian society, morality, so on and so forth, the effects it's had, the effect it has had on the victims has been enormous. And there, another dimension of it, in my dad as well, is that in terms of conceptions of healing, and dealing with events that are traumatic and upsetting, Buddhism provides rituals and ways of dealing with this, and again, for people living at the time, this was taken away from them, which accentuated and increased their suffering all the more. So I think, as you said, you know, this was a pillar of life, and when it was destroyed, it was you know, a devastating thing, but there are ways that people don't talk about that are important to recognize in terms of everyday lived experience that continue into the present. 
Je vous remercie. Vous parlez justement de ce, de ce système de protection dans votre ouvrage et de la façon dont le bouddhisme est un des mécanismes de protection pour les Cambodgiens. Et pour résumer votre thèse, si je l'ai bien compris, vous dites que les Cambodgiens ont tendance à voir le monde comme un endroit dangereux et à chercher des protections qui vont du surnaturel au politique. Et dans votre ouvrage, vous insistez sur trois types de protections, les nectars, les génies fonciers, dont je parlerai tout à l'heure, le bouddhisme et les individus qui ont du pouvoir et qui vous offrent une protection. Vous avez déjà un petit peu évoqué ce, ce problème dans votre précédente réponse, mais je voulais savoir si la disparition de la religion bouddhiste pendant le Cambodge la démocratie avait affaibli ce système de protection dans quelle mesure il avait affaibli la population et quelle a été l'impact de la destruction de ce système de protection qu'offrait le bouddhisme. Thank you, uh, the Civil Party uh, lawyer. The you know this issue. There's been a great deal of focus on the history, democratic the history of Cambodia. Uh, there has not nearly been enough attention paid, in the, for example, in the scholarly literature to the everyday lived experience, doing this systematically. There are accounts that you get, and I'm sure, and testimony that's been provided here about this. Um, but really, we need more study of this topic. Um, but, you know, based Again, on, on my research, my conversations, transcripts I've read, uh, it's clear that people felt that they had lost a central part of their way of dealing with the world. In Cambodia, the notion of balance is extremely important. Uh, a Buddhist valence of this would be the, con the idea of equanimity, the middle path not being disturbed by affect. And again, when you take away Buddhism, it's a complete disruption. It's bringing, making people out of balance. And they're different. I mean, I, I would guess that when this court was constructed, there were rituals that were performed. There was a protective barrier that was created. I, I don't know. I, I would guess that's true. Um, so again, it's not just Buddhism that those can enter into. It's animistic. There are multiple levels. Uh, that come from different traditions uh, in Cambodia, which is, of course, Buddhism's one, animism is one, uh, there are also Hindu traditions, Hindu traditions that are still there, as well as, uh, you know, Tang traditions, so on and so forth. Uh, so those are, in some sense, all operating. So here at the court, we have the Lord of the Iron Staff who sits nearby, who's an an spirit. Uh, we have an image uh, of an Angkorian king, yes, but it's an image that Cambodians I've spoken to interpret that as a Buddhist deity. Some people say it's a Tebuda. Um, I've heard talk to other people who think it may come from an image that you find at pagodas, where you actually see the Buddha at the moment of enlightenment, sitting next to two attendants. So again, we traverse this landscape. In one sense, there are laws all around us, but the notion of Buddhism is everywhere. So going back again to sort of the question you asked, all of these ideas, these norms, were just disrupted, people were thrown out of balance, uh, and it increased their suffering all the more, and I think especially not being able to perform rituals for the dead was a significant significance in addition to the ability of people to cope with their own suffering. Je vous remercie. Vous expliquez dans votre livre qu'il y a un moment où on peut s'implanter le bouddhisme comme la nouvelle religion. Pouvez-vous indiquer à la Chambre si cette analogie a permis une acceptation plus facile de l'encart et des politiques démocratiques par la population Et ceci dans quel but Je vous remercie. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Uh, civil Party Civil Lawyer. Yes, uh, the term Anka is what uh, as anthropologists, uh, Victor Turner, uh, being one of them, would call a multivalent symbol. It's a word that is diffuse, but yet embodies a, a number of different connotations, uh, as does perhaps the emblem of the court as well. As I said, it may resonate and suggest Buddhism, as well as Angkor, as well as law. Angkor would seem to be the same thing. So you have directives above, and the way it's used in the senior leadership, uh, ที่ทางกรรมจะนักเก็บปราบปราบปิดอังกาสเลสเลียนหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือหรือห
C'est très clair. Je, je vous remercie. Bah, je, bah, vous avez parlé de l'impact de l'interdiction du budisme pendant le Cambodge a démocratisé vos recherches, vos entretiens. Vous avez permis de d'évaluer l'impact de l'impact du Cambodge a démocratisé sur le budisme après le chute du Cambodge. ในช่วงเวลาที่ผ่านมาในช่วงเวลาที่ผ่านมาในช่วงเวลาที่ผ่านมาในช่วงเวลาที่ผ่านมาในช่วงเวลาที่ผ่านมาในช่วงเวลา
ជាមួយនឹងបាទអរគុណអរគុណលោកតាតាចារ្យហើយឥឡូវនេះពេលវេលាដល់ពេលសម្រាក់ថ្ងៃត្រង់ហើយអត់មានប្រកាសសម្រាក់ចាប់ព